What's up, guys? Welcome to Gameplay Stream number one. I'm DJ Wee, joined by Axlav. What's up, man? Not too much, man. I've just been enjoying some amazing games so far. Uh, MC Dongagu was especially just some, some great play. Yeah, and now we're going to see uh, Hart versus MC here in a TVP. We're going to start things off on Cloud Kingdom. And let's just go ahead and uh, make sure that both players are ready before we get started. We just saw Hart really, really dismantle parting uh, over on the mainstream. But I really <laughs> just do not think we're going to see a repeat performance here as MC looked uh, just ridiculously strong earlier on today. Oh, yeah. Um, I mean, the, the games versus parting, uh, Hart played really well. But Parting also made a lot of mistakes. He kind of, in a way, I, I would almost say he, he gave the games away a little bit. Yeah, um, yeah. And MC's not going to do that. Watching him versus Dong Regu, MC is just playing spectacularly today. Uh, he, is, he is not going to be making those type of mistakes. He is... He's going to give Hart a really, really, really tough time. Yeah, well, uh, you know, it, since this is uh, the MLG Spring Arena and we're here on Gameplay 1 stream, you know, we were actually talking just before. Uh, of course, um, Artosis and JP just came out of this booth and we had to inform Artosis that Parting just fell 0-3 to Hart. And Artosis, he was just assured, he was absolutely certain that Parting is not giving his 100% due to GSL. And it's not the first time that we've heard something like that where a player have kind of been reserved a little about it. But it looks like both players are ready. Either way, I'm really excited to see what will happen throughout the rest of Parting's games. But first, Complexity Heart versus MC. MC, a player that doesn't need much introduction. But I'll tell you what, Heart. What do you think about him in, in, in terms of his recent success? We talked about a little bit on the other stream that, you know, a lot of people kind of discredited Hart a little bit, said, oh, yeah. well, he's, he's, a, he's a gimmicky, he's a cheeky player, but you know, honestly, he's, he still posts results. He does, but uh, I'm not sure if he's going to post results here against MC. A lot of his play is very, you know, it's very counterattack. It's based on a lot of clever tactics. And MC is the master of tactics. That guy, I mean, he makes timings work. He makes tactical plays. Uh, you know, I, I don't think Hart's going to sneak Marines by him. I don't think Hart's going right, to outmaneuver exactly. him. It's, it's, it's going to be uh, a hand. I, I think what's going to happen is Hart's not going to be able to get those, those tactical plays early on to give him the advantage. And I think we're going to have to see, can Hart play the long game against a code S level player? Absolutely. And that's what I was hoping that we were going to see here. Because if there's one way to actually, say, disprove the naysayers out there, it would, of course, be that, um, you know, it, it would, of course, be that uh, to play the longer game, to be able to defeat a guy like MC. Um, that would certainly... Uh, work out quite well for him. So uh, I'm assuming he can play that longer game. And let's introduce our players here as we have as the Red Terran in the Northeast. We've got Complexity Heart and down here in the Southwest as the Blue Protoss, we've got SK MC. And MC looked really, really phenomenal this morning versus DRG. Of course, you know, we've got a completely different setup here, but he's no stranger to PVT either. He's played versus some of the best. You mentioned a top-level Code S player. Well, um, you know, he's had his ups, he's had his downs, but recently I feel like he's been on an upswing. Oh, definitely. Uh, the only weakness he's shown recently is in Protoss Mirror. His yeah, PVT, his yeah. PVT have looked so unstoppable. Uh, Protoss Mirror, though, uh, this term we're going to see if he can turn that around because lately he's been a little bit, little bit slipping in that regard. Um, but right now, you know, it's a PVT. This is his element. Um, it's, it may not be his best matchup, but it's definitely not his worst. And uh, this is a great map to show a macro game on. Yeah, it's I very agree. easy to take a third. Force a little tricky, and that's where all the, you know, the, a lot of tactics are going to come into play. Uh, both players trying to harass the ledge behind the fourth. Both players, maybe especially Hart, trying to sneak in one of those corner expansions. Yeah, um, and, and of course, if we get to that, and I think we are. I really do think that we're going to be seeing uh, a much later game uh, taken uh, much further here in this matchup. But uh, either way, we've got a uh, pretty standard opening here by MC. We are going to have this SCV making its way in here and... Uh, just survey the area, find out what's going on. Meanwhile, over in Hart's base, he's got a Marine up here at the front. Uh, we did see the probe try to make its way in, but it wasn't even allowed access there. I don't remember if he actually saw that tech lab go down, so let me just double check the vision. No, he just saw the barracks up there, so we are going to have a Reaper expand opening here for Hart as uh, he throws down that high ground CC. And the Reaper expands really, really shows he's actually going to play this differently than his parting. Uh, because the Reaper, when you get that Reaper early, the build time is kind of long, and it's not that great in a straight-on engagement. 
So you, the Tyrant really loses and all that early, uh, you know, early aggression options. But what he gains is a really good mid-game scout. It controls the tower as well. It can sneak in, check out the Protoss buildings. So, and that scouting can only pay off if you're making mid-game macro decisions. That's where that scouting information uh, is, is returned, its value. And so uh, this really shows they're both looking to, to put on a, you know, a much longer game. And we are going to have just the Marine and the Marauder at the front. But, uh, you know, not a whole lot's going to be done here with this army. We have one Stalker and uh, the Zealot, who's going to go ahead and get out of there. Now, the Reaper's going to make his way back into the main base of his opponent. And uh, MC's going to have to deal with this. How exactly will he do it? He pulls probes immediately, but uh, he's... A little bit slow in pulling that red probe back. After the first hit, if he pulled it back, I think he could have avoided any losses. Losing one probe's not too bad, though. Yeah. Uh, he, he saw the Marauder. He saw the Reaper. Uh, he might have even seen the command center with that probe that got up there. Um, I think it was just out of vision, though. Let's just double check here. Is, uh, it doesn't look like oh, he is going to be able to. But I, you th know. I think he can assume it. Based on yeah. a Reaper opening, it's almost always an expansion. Yeah, of course, of course. Yeah. Unless he was doing anything uh, crazy. And I, it's just we don't really see that. Um, and I don't think MC is even going to think. Like, he's not even going to have a thought like that go through his head. So there we have the two more gateways going down and the robotics facility right now while the second gas goes up. Meanwhile, the Nexus is down, already sending his probes over, and uh, the Reaper has been taken care of, it appears, or at least uh, chased away. We now have a very, very small army here uh, for Hart as he begins to take his natural expansion. So, you know what? Your wish has been granted, uh, Axlab. We're definitely be going to be going into uh, a much later game, especially than we saw in the Hart versus Parting games, which ended in like a staggering 30 minutes. I just, I really wasn't expecting it. I knew that Hart was going to come out with something, you know, pretty aggressive, but to actually take it all three games, it uh, it, was, it was quite interesting. Uh, and we could actually tell that paid off a bit. Um, uh, if we notice this, MC actually delayed his fourth pylon to get the two gates in robot a little bit faster because he was a little bit worried that Hart mm. would be going for some aggression. Um, so, you know, he cut a few probes there. Uh, but then again, Hart, in, in return to that, Hart had to also build his commands on the high ground to, to gain that advantage of, of scouting denial. Uh, so it, it's a pretty balanced game so far. Uh, so we have this first initial army moving out for Hart as uh, we've got more Marines being added to it. We see its stim is nearing completion there. And uh, behind this inside, we've got, of course, the two reactors on uh, the two barracks there and the factory just going down. Uh, as this uh, is going to move over, definitely check for a third, which most certainly is not going to be there quite yet. And I don't think it's going to push up too much to the front. Now we've got the Observer out as well. And this Zealot Sentry Army here can, of course... Uh, oh, yeah. The Zealot Sentry Army will definitely, definitely defend this army. Oh, yeah. This is more just a poke to see if he's trying to cut too many corners. He should turn around right now. Uh -oh. oh, a little bit slow and it lost a few units. It's going pretty well from though. You know, losing three Marines for four force fields... It's, it's a roughly even trade, I'd say. And uh, then it's just going to cause another warp in, which is to be expected anyway. The first Immortal's on its way out as well. And uh, another probe just trying to sneak through there. No forward pylon at all, but uh, the Observer's going to be able to get inside, see everything going on. Reactor on the factory, Starport coming up next. So, I mean, primarily looking at just a bio force right now. So what is the quick reaction from MC going to be? He's just going to go ahead and throw down his robotics bay, getting that information that indeed he knows knows exactly what he's dealing with and seems to be the right decision so far. I mean, MC playing a very standard game, right? I mean, reading his opponent, looking at the information he's got available to him, and just reacting accordingly. Yeah, I think the most interesting reaction is a lot of Protoss players favor getting two forges around the same time as that Robo Support Bay. But I think when MC, MC saw two barracks with two reactors, he knows there's a uh -huh. ton of Marines coming, and he's like, I need these Colossi faster than normal. Because if you get hit by 30 Stim Combat Shield Marines, and they have medics to deal with the force fields, you need to have those Colossi out. Uh, so that's why he's, he changed up his build a bit, getting those Colossi extra fast, and it looks like he actually might be going for a timing before upgrades. Three more gateways before any forges. He's definitely mm -hmm. looking to put on some push once he gets a couple Colossi out. All right, well, uh, the first Colossa is going to be on its way right now, Extended Thermal Lance. Actually, no, we've just got another Immortal coming out right there uh, while the Extended Thermal Lance begins building. Again, we're going to have another push here by Hart. The Medivac's uh, trailing behind, but they will be at least uh, involved in this engagement. Now, interesting position because without a third there, uh, he could potentially drop, which uh, is looks like a MC is going to be defending that. Um, but or attack the front. Either way, I don't think he's like going to be in a good position. Just kind of controlling space right now. Yeah. 
Uh, right now, he's you know he's trying to get all the vision. He's trying to get the map awareness, and he's poking to find a weakness. Yeah. Right. We see uh, we saw him do that a lot in his series versus party. He'd send squads units out, and if he saw an opening, he'd go in. But you know, this game, MC just you know staying tight, staying defensive, and we see Hart take the smart move. Discretion is better part of Valor today. Pulling back. Yeah. And that first Colossus is out. The second one's going to be started immediately. We still have this one Marine who's been ordered to stay back and let them know when that third base is going down. And uh, Zealot's going to lose his vision here as well. Um, and of course, the rest of the army now moving across from Hart. He started his third command center as well. He's uh, continuing to push out medevacs. And uh, the plus one weapons is about to complete here. And that's going to just coincide perfectly there with the extended thermal lance and about that second Colossus come out. So I feel like MC just has the army he needs in order to deal with this. He's almost got full energy on all of his uh, on all of his sentries. And it's a good thing that he had that that watchtower right there. Oh, he yeah. pulled back immediately. Had that zealot still been holding on to it, that could have been a, just a deadly, deadly push there for Hart. Yeah. This map has tons of those little short ramps. Yeah. And if a Terran gets stuck with halfway on, halfway off to get cut in half by Forest Field, that can be a game ender right there. So going back into the base. Now, it, talk to me a little bit from a Protoss perspective. At what point you feel like you know your opponent's going all bio, you're reacting accordingly with, of course, the Colossus. you still got some vision inside the base. At what point are you saying, okay, I'm ready to take a third, or I need to go for an attack with it? You talked about the extra gates going up. There we now have the double forge starting. Um, do you, you know, still anticipate a push, or at what point are you saying I need to get that third? Well, I think what MC was doing is he was thinking about going for a very early push, but he wanted to do it as a reaction to a mistake Hart made. If he was able to segment off some of Hart's early forces, catch him off guard, get a couple kills, he, he would then go on just push for the win. He was unable to do that, and he's recognizing that if he tries to do a push now, Hart will counterattack him, Hart will have a good concave set up, and it's not going to work. Um, so what he, and he's also deciding to do, okay, I'm investing these upgrades in his blink, I think what we'll see him do is we'll see him wait till the 1-1 the one -one upgrades and the blink finish, then he's going to try to deny the third from the Terran. I don't think we're going to see him go gung-ho and go for the kill, but he might try to get Terran to, to have to lift this command center, and then maybe he'll take a third to equalize things. Okay, okay. Uh, now, he already has tried to deny that a little bit, of course, with the pylon that we just saw right there, easily taken care of here by heart. Now, the, of course, my next question has to be, how then are you, I mean, is he just going to zealot warp in to try to continuously put some harass here on the third? Because obviously, this isn't a very mobile army, and we have the observer checking out everything going out uh, across the map here. Yeah, it looks like uh, he actually just really wants to take it to late game. He's taking it, you know, he sees Terran taking a third. He's like, I'm at heart, heart taking this third. I'll take my third. And he's just going for his, his Templar to make that super late game army. There's a cancellation, and here we're going to have a battle here. Force in the middle. The Vikings do move forward, already take it down. Here. Yeah, they are. They're, so they're really focusing down on those Vikings. We see all the Colossus fall but one, and the force fields are just not going to do enough. He, I mean, Hart did a great job on the denial of the third, and at the point where he had to warp in his units there, that harass is going to come a little bit later, and the nexus of the third, uh, or the third is going to be delayed by quite a bit. I think MC made a critical mistake in taking that fight. He had already had his third canceled. He had won one at about 95% done during that battle. And Hart had won one already finished. So Hart had that upgrade advantage, which is why his units did a little better there than might have been expected. And it was a battle for no reason. MC could have just backed up, waited for 1-1, one, one, waited for a storm, and then moved forward. And uh, he could have reestablished a third and kept more of his army alive at that point. I mean, there are going to be now six, Col or six Vikings on the field to just the one Colossus. The tech path now going towards Storm, so it's not likely that we're going to see additional Colossus yet. Maybe later on, Once as the we Vikings see that. Are dead. Right, yep. exactly, that, that switch back and forth. But it looks like Hart is just going to uh, go back and forth here. He's going to stem Very and go concave. up the ramp. He gets a great concave, a huge surround, but the first Storm start to come out. There we see the force fields go down and more storms being dropped on that retreating army right now the supply 165 for the Terran 117 for the Protoss that third base is about ready to complete but Hart playing a little back and forth here this pylon is not coming to play at all and look at that with this third base thriving here with economy the fourth will be thrown down as well I like how you see Hart expecting some harass on third he's got his rally points there he's got some Marines there um, I, I think Hart had made a great move. Oh, here he goes. Battle coming in here. Good positioning by Hart. Stim going off. Not too many medevacs, but there's not enough zealots and doesn't matter. Just pushing through. 
Yeah, and uh, Hart just doing a fantastic job here. He's going to stim yet again, just take out the remainder of these units. He's keeping some at the front, some in the back. Here we have a bunch of charge lots moving in and a storm to try to deter this group from moving into the third, but it will not stop them. Even with these health, they've got the medevacs here for support. And the third went back up Axe Lab, but it is going to fall yet again. And there it goes. Hart uh, appearing to look in better and better shape as this game continues. Yeah, I mean, Hart's in total command now. Yep. Uh, MC's going to hang in there because, you know, you get a few good storms off. Maybe you can turn it around. I um, mean, but, you know, MC's not even hitting upgrades. He's, he's going to equalize him soon, but equalizing's not enough. And, you're, you know, you've got four, um, almost four orbitals up for only two Nexuses. MC's main is out. His natural's probably running dry. Uh, you know, he's... He's going to have to hope for the Miracle Storms, basically. Yeah, uh, I mean, I agree. There's just nothing uh, nothing else that, that's really going to help. And even with some Miracle Storms, the production right now, and there's an EMP, it only hits a corner of one of those Archons, and uh, they're going to easily be cleaned up. And again, I'm not sure that was a battle he wanted to force. And there it is, GG, last-ditch effort there. And game one does go to Hart. What do you yeah. think about that? It was really well played by Hart. I think MC came in almost... MC played too safe that game. Um, MC, I think he felt that he was a better player, so he would make these, he'd play super safe. He's like, I'm going to get the claw side before the upgrades and make sure I can't die early. Um, then instead of pushing with that army advantage he had from skipping to third, skipping to upgrades, he then just got them late. Sure. And then Hart was just ahead. And you know what? If MC was able to outmaneuver, outposition Hart, it would have been okay, but he wasn't. Hart was all over him. Hart's concaves are great. His attacks are great. His positioning was great. And he just put on a hell of a game. So we're going to be moving on to game two. What well, it was Metropolis, I believe, is what the second map yes. is going to be here, and we're going to be vited to it shortly. But Complexity Heart, uh, having only lost, uh, well, actually, yes, he lost one game so far to Violet, as far as I or know. Two two maps, one one series. Or yeah, 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 yeah exactly. Uh, so he lost. Uh, let's see, he lost two one yep. to Violet. And uh, and then his other one was three zero parting, so he's, he's only at five two now. Yeah, yeah, sitting uh, sitting uh, pretty good here. As uh, look, at Metropolis is going to be the next map, and we're going to get started here as uh, soon as players are ready. MC says he is ready. We'll wait for Hart um, to give us the A O K. And uh, thanks for joining us here for the MLG Spring Arena. Glad to have you here, Axe Lab. I think Thank it's you. great to uh, hear you guys' insight and uh, also just to uh, have you casting. Um, no light version. Mm. Are you? I'm not familiar with Metropolis Light. Is that where there's half as many minerals? or? <laughs> okay. Okay. Okay, um, looks like MC needs a short break here. Uh, we'll probably need to just have him ask the admin. Um, because I have, I, no, I think that the MLG map, uh, in particular, there's a couple of maps that do have uh, a bit. So we'll, we'll find out. Yeah. It's, it's honestly the uh, admin's call to make, not ours here. Uh, but we've seen so great. What do you think about the round-robin format? I think it's really exciting. You see, uh, you know, there's players with strong matchups and weak ones, and the round-robin allows you to see every single matchup from a player um, you know, they have one bad bad game early, it's not going to knock them out. Uh, so it's, it's definitely, I, I, it's my favorite format uh, because your favorite player, you, get, you know, you get a bunch of series from them. Yeah, you can't you ask for to, better yeah, than that. Exactly. You get to watch them in just about every possible configuration. Yeah. And then um, the, the other unique thing is once we go into the bracketed play, what do you think about the top seeds getting to choose their opponents? Because it's kind of interesting in that not only – are you sitting in a position where you get to choose who you play, but there might also be a strategic pick based off of knowing who you're going to make the uh, the second pl you know oh, seed yeah. end up playing. I think that's really interesting. Um, you saw there's tons of people love to watch the group selection ceremonies in the old Brood War Pro Leagues, and uh, GSL group selection ceremony is always great. And now we got MLG, not group selection ceremony, but it's for the bracket, you pick who you yeah. play. It's something similar. The players get some choice over their opponents. Uh, you're going to see who's confident what matchups, who thinks who's a better player, um, and I, I think it's great. All right. Well, uh, we still have not gotten an official word on uh, what exactly is going on here. Um, While okay. we're waiting for this, I actually have a confession to make. What's that? I was actually one of those doubters of heart. Yeah, and were he's, you? he's changed me this game, man. I, I mean, it's kind he's of changed me. Yeah, he. Uh, I. 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 I know that it's really easy in, in the landscape of StarCraft to just like kind of 
say, I've seen this guy play through its competition, yeah. and this is what I saw, like, with 